Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this really unique Tyco Spirit of 76 locomotive that I picked up on eBay. I found this locomotive in a lot with a whole bunch of other locomotives, and I think I ended up paying the equivalent to about $3.50 for it, which to me seemed like a pretty good deal. There is, as you can tell, a catch to that though, and that's that this engine's in really bad condition. It's missing some parts. Uh, this is chipped, so it couldn't even clip into anything, even if I did have the parts. The light fixture's broken. The wheels are not in such great shape. Um, the motor does run to some extent, but not very well. So today we're gonna see if we can get this thing at least riding the rails once again. I don't have super high expectations for it, but there is some stuff to work with, and it still is a very cool locomotive. So I'll take it over to the track, I'll show you all what it's currently doing, and then we'll go from there. Despite how this thing looks, it did actually move a few feet under its own power last time, so hopefully we'll do something similar here. It's obviously not going to stay on the track so great like that, but uh, let's give it some power here. Oh, no. there we go. Yeah, it keeps derailing because of that front truck, but um, I mean, you can tell the drive has quite a bit of life left in it, so... With a little bit of work, I'm sure we could get that thing going again. So as you can see, this thing is far from hopeless. I've certainly uh, seen some worse locomotives here on the channel, but uh, it's still a good idea to open these things up and just uh, check in on the drive. I'll at least uh, throw some fresh oil in it and do any cleaning that's necessary. Well, that's no good. I think now we're going to move on to trying to find a solution for the front truck. Now the first problem is, as I pointed out earlier, it's missing a piece which goes right across here. It's basically just like a little bar with a hole in the middle, which would uh, clip into this piece right here. Now first of all, I obviously don't have that part. Second of all, even if I did, this is all chipped right here. So I think we're going to have to come up with something kind of creative. We'll go through uh, all my spare parts and see if we have something to uh, mimic that bar. So let's see if we can find something equivalent for that truck. I'd imagine with the amount of parts I have for old Tyco locomotives, there's bound to be something in here. This I believe is from a Roco locomotive, but it uh, actually looks like a pretty similar part, funny enough. Okay, so there doesn't really seem to be anything of use in there. Let's move on. Well, that looks like an identical part, and uh, it's unfortunately missing the same uh, piece right there. It doesn't have any clips, but uh, really what I want is just that drawbar. I don't know if I have one of those. Here's one off a dummy locomotive, also cracked. <laughs> is that our part? I'm not 100% sure if this is gonna work because I'm pretty sure it was off a dummy locomotive for my uh, super, super chief project, if any of you remember that video. But um, I'll try it out here first of all. If that had both of its pins, it looks like that would fit. But the bigger question is, will this fit here? 
Well, I'll be darned. We actually managed to find what we need. So now the question is going to be, how do we get this to clip back into there? That's going to be a challenge. I went digging through my spare parts and I found this screw. So what I'm thinking might work is if, you know, we remove this piece of plastic here and countersink a hole. We may be able to get this screw through the top of this and have it hold the truck in place. And I know for some people this is probably not a great solution, but it's between this and throwing this piece out. So I don't really care too much about uh, doing some work here. So we'll get rid of that and we'll try to drill it out and hopefully this will work. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but fundamentally, you know, the weight is on these edges here. It's right on here. So all the screw needs to do is just hold this in place and uh, we're in business. Just gonna try to burn a little pilot hole in the plastic before we start drilling here and hopefully that will prevent the bit from uh, kind of sliding around. So I went and got a bit which is just slightly smaller than the threads so I think that that should make this the perfect size. Now something a subscriber pointed out recently is a good strategy to not break your drill bits is to install them deeper in the chuck, that way there's less area and it doesn't stress the metal as much. And I just thought that that was genius because I'm always breaking these smaller bits. So anyway, we'll try to get this uh, kind of even here. All right, well that seems pretty good. So I guess we'll get this back out and try to thread the screw through it. So uh, this looks pretty good. I decided to back the screw off about a turn and a half just to uh, allow this to move around because you want the truck to be able to uh, obviously turn left and right, uh, but also up and down a little bit. It's important, uh, you know, for an uneven track to be able to do that. So this is all looking really good. But before we go reinstalling that truck, I first just want to uh, get this light reinstalled. Otherwise, it's going to be a nightmare to get back in there. The post for the light fixture is completely broken off, so I think we're just going to cheat a little bit and just put uh, a little bit of hot glue in there. And this should work just fine. You know, it's not ideal, but we're working with a $3 locomotive. I just want to get this thing back together without uh, sinking any parts into it. Well, at least as minimal as possible. So far, it's not looking half bad, but before we go take this thing over to the track, I just want to quickly uh, try to give it some power. Hopefully it will start and we can actually use the motion of the wheels to uh, clean them up. Hmm, that's interesting. We've got a working headlight, but the motor's not starting. What's going on here? Well, that looks fine. Okay, I see what I did wrong here. This is so far over here that it's actually scraping up against the gears. So what's important is that this uh, stays right in the center here. Let's carefully overlay that. I'm sure we're not gonna have that problem again. Well, those are looking a fair bit better. And now I'll just uh, manually clean the front ones. All right, I think this thing is all ready to go. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> yeah, look at that. 
Not even a single bit of hesitation. Whoops. Yeah, this thing's got plenty of get up and go. It's flying. Well, I think I should throw a coupler on this thing and see if we can uh, haul some cars. All right, new coupler installed, and I've got the conversion car all ready to go there, so let's see if we can uh, get this thing hooked up. Well, it's struggling a little bit, but it's doing it, hauling a modern intermodal train. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, I think I'll about finish it off there, but uh, I'm very impressed. I know it's not a perfect locomotive, but for a $3 engine and, you know, just a bunch of spare parts I had laying around, I am quite happy with those results. It's out on the layout hauling a modern consist. I think that's pretty cool. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed, and with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching.